Okay, here we are now ready to install the JR2. Same unit, as I mentioned, is really, well, same way to install as all the units, pretty much, apart from the K8. However, we're going to install it here. Really important to just give a bit of clarity around this tap. So this tap is actually around about a 20 mil in diameter when I unscrew the aerator off the end, which unfortunately won't connect to the Enagic system. So even with all these different fittings, unless it's a 22 mil, it becomes very hard. So I've actually got a rubber connection on here that's just temporary to allow us to actually connect the unit so you can get a clear understanding. The standard 22 mil fitting, when you unscrew the aerator at the end of your tap, that's what we've got here. So there are different fittings that you can find, um, but this one's now gonna be able to be fitted. So first thing that we're gonna do is get the unit into position. So we've got the two pipes here for inlet and outlet. We've got the plug, so we're just gonna move that out of the way. And we're gonna move the unit so that it's basically in position there and we can see what's going on and we are going to run this lead over here and plug it in so let's just turn the power off a second right with this hose sometimes they're really floppy so what what's important to understand is they do unscrew so if you go anti-clockwise it unscrews from the from the actual unit so what we want to do is we want to screw it in clockwise and make sure it's nice and tight there. However, you want to keep hold of it this way and then twist the pipe the other way. And what you're actually doing is tight, tightening up all this coil area. And in doing that, it's actually going to stiffen up. But the reason why you want to make sure it goes that way, which is clockwise to tighten to the unit, but then this way is anti-clockwise. So then you're able to bend it and move it to where you want it. Something really simple, but important to be aware of. You're going to take the end pipe off. We're going to keep that for if we're ever moving, we're ever um, sending the unit back. Really good to know. The next thing we're going to do is get clarity on our pipe. So this is the exit hose. Now, it doesn't need to remain that length. In all fairness, I think it's bloody ugly, we're keeping it that long. So what I like to do is make sure everything's fitted as neat as possible. So this kitchen is really nice, it's open plan. Naturally, the owner wouldn't want this to be sat there looking ugly. So there's a few different options. I mentioned before about this little pipe you can have. So if you were to cut this and put that in place on there, then this can actually sit and pour out the water. So remember the 2.5 come out here. Anything that's the runoff when you're getting the 9.5, the 4.5 would run off. So we could actually fit this there and have this pipe going into it. So we can make that work, but I just, I just don't like this to be fair. So what I'd actually do is I'd cut this because we've got another suction pipe here. Now what's important to be aware of for the clean with the JR2 and the SD501, you need to be able to put this pipe and this pipe in a glass. So you need to make sure that there's enough length on this. So you can't cut it really short because you won't have enough length. So what I'd do is I'd probably take it to there and cut it. Now you can get more of this pipe from Enagic, so don't worry about that. If you cut it too short, you can order some more pipe. You're gonna get this little suction bit here, stick that on and then you can choose to put it over there. I'd probably choose to have it round about here. Okay, so it's, it's, it's coming out there. It's keeping it close to the unit. The next thing that we wanna do is make sure we're connecting the inlet pipe, which is the white pipe. So at the end of the, at the, end of the pipe is a little red um, hose. I'm gonna to have to use my teeth. My mum won't be happy. It's a little stopper, okay? So the units are tested before they leave the factory. So there is likely to be a little bit of fluid in there. However, what we've got now is, let's get rid of that one. We've got this, which is the standard tap connector. It looks like a camera. It's ugly as hell, but a lot of people like to use this. Now, you can certainly use it should you choose to. And once again, if you wish to, you can cut that shorter. I'm not going to do for this, 
But what you do is you unscrew this white um, piece at the back and you put it over the pipe. And just put that on there. There we go. Now then, what you do is, when, this is one of the things that I always do. If you put that on straight away like that and straight, when you tighten this up, it will start to twist this. So I always turn it the other way and put it on. And then when I bring it forward and I tighten it, it actually will start to fit in and get nice and fitted. So it's not all making a mess. But as you notice there, I've kept it so it's actually pushing down so it keeps it neat. So it's not up here looking like a mess. Everything's about visually connection because when you have family and friends come over, the first thing they're gonna see if there's cables everywhere is what is that mess you've got on your bench? So please be aware of that. I'm, I'm, I'm actually shocked at how many people choose to install it such a mess. So you've, all, you've got all these other fittings here, which um, we're just gonna pick one now to, to connect on. So the first thing you're gonna do is just check to see if it will actually screw on easily enough. I think we might be gray one. Okay, so we need to then put one of the rubbers in there. So always make sure you've got a rubber on. Ooh, yeah. So that will screw into there. And then what we're gonna do is put that in place and this is gonna go over and you're gonna screw it in there. Now, there are different ways you can do this. Personally, I actually like to, I jumped the gun a bit, I actually like to fit all this on in one. So what I do is I put that gray connection in and I put that on first and then I tighten this on. So remember, in most cases you will have taken off what we call an aerator off the end. Make sure you've got in and pulled the rubber seal out that was in the original tap. I haven't had to do it because I've got this um, adapter on here. But basically, I'm gonna turn that pipe and then I'm gonna tighten it up. As I mentioned, I am not a fan of this, this connection. So, what I'm going to do now is basically, now it's in place, it's all connected up, it's all ready to go to be fair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the tap on. As you can see, tap water comes out the bottom. I turn it to shower, you've got the shower option. I turn it to ion. The water now is going into the unit and it's going to come out of this part. As I mentioned earlier on, it's, this is only a rubber connection that's on there temporarily to help um, just get this installed to show you. However, don't worry about that water coming out there. Now then, I'm gonna leave this running for a while. It's actually just flushing through the system. The power isn't on, it's perfectly fine, but what's important to be aware of, the unit works without the power on. It doesn't charge the water though. So the water is still flowing through right now, going through the filter and actually creating filtered water. But whenever you get your unit, it's really important that you run the water for several minutes to actually flush out the filter. Very important you do that. So I just leave that running for a while. As we know, that's all good. Now then, I do have another connection which Beth will kindly get to me for the tap. So really important to be aware of, there's a few different things that once it's connected up, we'll get rid of these connections, is that a few other things that came with it. Remember we said about the funnel and the enhancer? Basically, this is what's going to be used in the side of the unit here to create the um, 2.5 and 11.5. You've got the testing kit to make sure it's all working fine. And you've got litmus paper here, which you can use to test your saliva, your urine as well. So that's basically how to, thank you very much. So that's basically how to um, connect the unit up and get it working. Now. I mentioned earlier that I don't like this. It looks terrible in my opinion. So Enagic have what they call the metallic diverter. 
Whenever I buy a unit, I always get the metallic diverter because everybody always says to me, oh no, I don't want to spend the money on one of these. And then when it arrives, they're like, ooh, that doesn't look very pretty. And I say, don't worry, I've got the metallic diverter. And they're like, oh, thank you. Because I know what people need. So it's very important that um, people get this. So what we're going to do is, the, water, the units had a good flush through there. We're actually going to take this off. And remember, like the, the, the thing is, is that the Japanese, some people don't like the look of the units, but the Japanese aren't bothered about the look of things. What they're bothered about is, is this good for my health? So, there we go. So, as easy as that to take off. So, we get that pipe there. Let's get that out of the way. Now then, we make sure we put on the metal end. So, when you get it, this is already on like so. So, you unscrew. Take that off, put it on the end of there, and then once again, twist it, put it over the end, start turning it, and get it in position. Once it's there, offer that up. How's that? Very, very nice. So far, far better than this, far, far better, looks a lot cleaner, more appealing. Auntie Sandra comes over, sees how lovely this looks and she wants to buy one. That's the difference. This is, it's the one percenters that make all the difference. So this is how to, to install your unit there. Now then, let's, um, let's just tighten that up. Let's turn this on. So power on. What we're going to do now is really important. We're going to open up the side panel. So on the JR2, the SD501, what we do is we basically touch that and we open it up. Here is your filter. So, me biro, here we go. Whatever today's date is, you write that on, I actually don't know what today's date is, but I think I'm round about, I'm gonna say, there, there we go. And I think I'm at a few days out, but we're in June as of the time of this video. So I'm now going to put that on here on the filter. So I know that's the date that I installed it in. So what I'm now going to do is keep my finger on the reset button. So that's actually now reset the filter, filter reset. You can see it. Now the machine knows that it's ready to start counting the amount of liters that are going through it. The filter will do 6,000 liters, but it's designed to be changed within 12 months. So please be aware of that. It's basically 17 liters of water a day. So if you're giving out water trials or you've got a large family, you're probably gonna go through a filter easily a year. However, if you're on your own or there's just a couple of you and you're not drinking much water, drink more. If you're not drinking much water, then definitely be aware that 12 months, maybe make a note in the calendar, whatever you need to do, you need to be changing the filter, okay? So, we can cover that now, we've taken care of that. The next thing that we're gonna do is get the enhancer into the tank. So, it's as simple as just pulling the side panel off. And on the side panel, on the, um, on the SD501 Platinum, it doesn't have this label. But basically what this label says is to when you put it, the solution in here for the first time, You've just got to let the, the unit keep pulling it in and sucking it in because it fills up the line to when it needs to add it to the, to the actual unit when it wants to create the 2.5 waters. So take the lid off, very easy, just pulls off the top. Get your funnel in place. Open up your enhancer and pour that into the unit. So it'll take the full bottle of it as you'll start to see, the red little ball will start to rise once it gets to a certain level. Here we go. Come on. Don't be shy now. Here we go. It's going to get some legs now. So then once that's done, we can get that out of the way. We're going to take the lid off and we're going to actually put the lid back on that and we're going to slide it. We're just going to actually check first. Inside here is a little nipple with a rubber on it. So you want to make sure that the rubber is around that nipple and hasn't fallen off and you're going to push that in place. That's going to help seal the saline solution in there. The actual 
top pit, which is here, is for, um, it's used basically if you have no minerals in your water. So you put a calcium chamber in there to help add the um, mineral into the water to create the electrolysis process. It's only used if you have no minerals in your water, which you'll soon find out when you do the testing. However, we do because we're on town water. So what we're going to do is put this cover back on. Now then, I mentioned that is only used when you use the 2.5 or 11.5 waters, but the 11.5 water can only come out when you use the strong acidic. Now then, let's start this running and I'll show you what's going on. So we've got tap, we turn the valve, comes through here and comes out. So let's just put that down there so it's not making too much noise while I'm talking. Beautiful. Now then, Kangen water at the moment is coming out there, which we know is nine. Push the button. You're going to get nine point, uh, you're going to, sorry, 8.5, you've got now nine. When you press the button again, it flashes. This is what it's doing is it's flushing out the nine that was in there. And now once it goes solid, it's ready to go with 9.5. Really important. So if you change down to beauty water, it's going to beep because beauty water is between 4.5 and 6 pH. Therefore, it's warning you. And as you can see, it's red. It's warning you don't drink this. It's better than a lot of bottled waters. However, don't drink it, okay? Now then, the one thing that we wanna do is go to strong acidic water. With strong acidic water, the, the flow rate's gotta be lower. What it's now doing is it's gonna start sucking in this fluid and it's gonna say enhance a refill because it needs to suck it in. So at the moment now, you have gotta run it for around about the first time you use it, you have gotta keep it running for about a minute to suck that fluid in and make sure that it's actually go, there you go, refill solution. So all you do is you leave it running. Just leave it running and it will eventually find that solution and it will be in the system. So it will go off. It may sound annoying, but it will go off. So the important thing is, is when you're actually running your 2.5 strong acidic water, that's gonna be coming out the bottom, the 2.5 for disinfecting. What's coming out the top at the same time is the 11.5 for degreasing. As you've just seen, it's accepted that solution, so now the line is full for when you need it. it won't, you won't have to do that the next time you use it. It will be in there unless you run out. And if you run out, you're gonna see the red ball come down here to the bottom. However, at the moment now, it's running through the, the strong acidic water. So let's do a quick test to show the difference. So we know that this, on this pH chart, Basically what we've got is, we know acidity is gonna be, well, this is 2.5, so it's gonna come out really deep dark, uh, deep, dark orange. And then we know alkalinity is gonna be, uh, the alkalized water is gonna be very high in the purple. So what I'm gonna do is with these pH drops to make sure that the unit's working fine, I'm gonna get the 2.5 coming out here, put some of that in there, and then I'm gonna put two drops in just to show you um, what's going on. As you can see, it's very, very acidic. Now then, watch what happens when I get the strong alkalized water. It's turned purple. So I now know that the unit is actually producing the water. If, if it didn't do that, there's no minerals in the water and therefore you'd need the calcium chamber. So. I'm gonna now, whenever you're using the, the strong acidic water or the degreasing water, the 11.5, you've got to, when you're finished with it, press one of the buttons, ideally press Kangen water. Now what it's doing is it's cleaning. It's actually flushing out the saline solution, the electrolysis enhancer from in the chamber so you're not gonna be drinking it. If you drink it, it just tastes really salty. It doesn't taste very nice. However, one of the things to be aware of, and this is in no way, shape or form a claim, that if you've had a big night drinking alcohol and you want to make sure that you're hydrated and okay and not having a hangover the next day, then, as you see it's gone off, then you can come and get the 11.5 from here and drink a pint of it. And I guarantee you, you will feel fantastic in the morning. It's not a claim. But every single person that's done it's gone, I had no hangover and I feel amazing. So there's got to be something in it. There we go. So that's something that you can do to make sure that you're getting your body hydrated effectively. Um, oh, turned it the wrong way. So um, that's in place now. 
So you've, you've got a clear understanding that whenever you run the strong acidic water, make sure you flush it out. Now then, the only other thing to be aware of is every time you use the unit on the JR2, the level of car, the SD501, after approximately 15 minutes of use or no use over 24 hours or 30 liters of water that have gone through the unit, the unit needs to do its own clean. And what will happen is you'll turn the water off, it will go off as normal, but when you come back to use it, it will come up cleans. And all that means is keep running the water, just leave the water running and the unit is cleaning itself. And after 30 seconds, don't stop it until it's finished, but after 30 seconds, it will go off and it will say Kangen water or whatever water you wanted. So very important that you're aware of that. That's for the level of car, the JR2 and the SD501 units. The K8 does its own clean automatically. So don't worry about that. The other thing to be aware of as well is that with these units, you've just got to make sure you do not put hot water through them. They do not like hot water. That will damage the plates if you keep putting hot water continuously through it. Um, but in a nutshell, that's really it. The E-Clean, which we're going to get into in another video, is a very simple process, is, which is to be done every two weeks. So I encourage you to sit through, watch that video, and you know, welcome and congratulations on choosing to purchase one of the best health appliances that you'll ever own. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye.